I'd <laughs> fucking flown to the other side of the world to avoid mm. you. And then you're there in the cabana <clears throat> next to me. And I walked straight back into the terrace. I blanked you if I remember. And I said, Boxy, you're never going to believe this. Jamie Lang and Sophie are staying next to us in the cabana right over there. She was like, oh, calm down, Jack. You know, we'll probably bump into them into the, in the restaurant, but it'll be fine. We're on our own holiday. There's plenty of space. I went into the toilet. I was so annoyed. I was sat there on the toilet and I looked down and these toilets in the bathroom had a big glass floor so you could look down into the ocean it was actually quite relaxing you could see the fish swimming around and the coral beneath me and as i was having my angry poo looking down into the ocean you swam <laughs> underneath the cabana doing a little bit of the old backstroke with your goggles on waving up through the glass floor of the toilet hey hon we're gonna have so much fun oh, yeah. romantic getaway ruined so i'll go in there and i'll slide the prescription across the counter to mm -hmm. him and then he will to toodle off into the back of the chemist and then with all the other people waiting for their prescriptions as well all of the neighbors and the mm -hmm. people that i live uh, you know around mm -hmm. and see all of the time he will then start like shouting back across the chemist like he's working in billingsgate fish market <laughs> he'll be like white hole white hole we only have a hundred milliliters of the cream for genital warts <laughs> shut up inside voices it's like he's like a bingo caller he's right. literally shouting out my prescriptions across the room and i'm like that's not a job where you can I th be at. i thought those boards are cleared off no <laughs> no no everyone looking 51 up the bum <laughs> suppository <laughs> Blood yeah. in the poo, 32. <laughs> Imodium, shut up. <laughs> it basically went, dear sir, madam, I, Joe Thomas, speak to a therapist, have genital warts, and have hemorrhoids. Yours faithfully, Joe Thomas. And, then I, so, and I was working in the office, and I sent it to the bloke on the reception desk and said, can you print this for me? <laughs> what? And he printed it. But then, but then he came into the office and was like, has it come out? And it hadn't come out of the printer. And he was like, oh no. Oh. And he'd sent it to a different printer on the same network. Oh and God. he didn't know where the printer was. So it's oh. come out somewhere. And he was like, I think I know where it is. There's a no we our company has another building like across the road. <laughs> <laughs> so it's come out there. And I was like, could you just make sure no one reads it? Because it's a bit embarrassing. Because like, I've done the in-betweeners and stuff. <laughs> We started talking and he was like, so, you know, what directors do you like or what are your favorite films? And I was like, well, I, I don't really know anyone. Um, I don't really know a lot of directors. And and he's like, well, what movies do you like? And I was like, well, you know, like Dirty Dancing and The Goonies and Pretty Woman. But like other than that, I don't I haven't really seen anything. And he was like, have you seen The Godfather? And I was like, no. And he's like, have you seen uh, uh Annie Hall and I was like no and you know he starts like listing all these movies that most people I think see and he's like have you seen Requiem for a Dream and I was like oh that like really fucked up weird drug movie <laughs> and he was like yeah and I was like actually I have seen that who corrected that and he was like I did <laughs> and it was like my heart fell through my feet and then it was like oh you can go back um, like backstage like all the players, well, not players, but like celebs will be there and stuff. So, yeah, catch some selfies with people and stuff. So, all right, cool, fantastic. So my friend was very keen. He was going up to anyone. Hey, what's up, Snoop Dogg? You right? Can we get a picture? Getting pictures. Now, this was very out of my comfort zone at this point. I was like, I don't really want to annoy people. Mm -hmm. They're all there with their entourage. And then to, for me to butt in and be like, can I have a picture? And I was like, oh, okay, I've got to get some socials. That's why I'm here. Yeah. And there was a taco truck. And I go over to this guy. And he's eating a taco with his two kids. And I said, hey, what's up? And I've really, you know, I've got the confidence. I was like, hey, what's up? You are right? Um, Hannibal Buresk, right? This guy looks at me and he goes, nah, man. That ain't me, bro. And I was stood there and I was like, um, but I know you're someone famous. And then no. instead of me just walking away, I was like, can I have a selfie with you, please? <laughs> <laughs> no. And then he goes... Not if you don't know who I am. Oh, so no. Then, so then my friend just starts laughing because he's got his selfies. So I was I, I was like, um, okay, uh, I've got my phone in my hands, like ready to take a picture. I was like, um, he's just looking at me, eating his tacos. He's like, so uh, what you going to do? <laughs> <laughs> I 
<laughs> and then my friend goes, no, that's not Hannibal Buress. That's little Rel Howry, yeah? Who's oh, on, um, yeah. he's in He's in Get Out. He plays yeah, Daniel's yeah, best yeah. friend. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So then I've done the whole, oh, yeah, of course. Yeah, that's you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So then he goes, okay. Uh, so I was like, can I still have that selfie, please? <laughs> and he's like, I suppose so. And then I took a picture with him. I was so embarrassed. Oh, no. No. I literally took the picture. He just walked off. And I just had to, just, I literally took it and deleted it straight <laughs> away. My soul inside. Oh. It's, it's, that is one of the top 10 embarrassing moments oh. that's ever happened. It's when I was working for MTV, where literally all I wore was the same outfit, which was like this ripped little denim skirt that I got in Beyond Retro mm-hmm. and, and a band t shirt. Literally, that's all I wore <laughs> for about three years. And then I got down to Oxford Circus and quite busy. And this girl, kind of heading into Soho. So it's quite a bit of a walk, like yeah, about ha- yeah, like yeah. half an hour, 40 minutes. Yeah. I got a little tap on my shoulder from a girl and she's like, your skirt's cut. <gasps> I said, what do you mean? And she goes, your skirt's cut. And, okay. and I just turned around. And I had like a big bag and I'm, I'd kind of done this with my bag and I'd lifted my skirt. <laughs> oh no. So my skirt was right off my like pants or out. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> For the whole journey. For half an hour. Well, no, well, I don't know. Cause she just told me not to circus. So I was like, I've done, I've been wor- walking, but like someone would tell you. Was more, and also I just started on telly. So I'm like, I don't know. I'm kind of maybe the girl on MTV or maybe I'm not. I don't know. But I've just walked through central London with like my bum on show. <laughs> I get home that night. And I'm telling Mike the story. And he went, oh, yeah, I noticed that. <laughs> what? <laughs> and I went to call you, but then you didn't hear me. So I just left you. Oh, Michael Douglas. And then I was like, but that was like King's Cross. Wow. No one stopped me and told me until I got to Oxford Circus. Fuckers. That's how Michael long. Fucking Michael Douglas. But also, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Or, like, called, oh, or called phone. my phone. It yeah, wasn't the Dark Ages. Phones then, there right? were phones then 10 years ago. It was an exam uh-huh. at Marlborough College. Right. And I was sat in this exam and about 20 minutes into the exam, uh, I suddenly heard the sound of some of the girls in the exam gasping and screaming in horror. Right. I then looked up and I saw a couple of my male companions cheering and laughing. I looked up and at the front of the exam hall, Mr. Jarrett, Mm -hmm. the maths teacher, who was adjudicating the exam, was sat at his laptop and he had not realised that his laptop was connected to the projector behind him and he was transmitting hardcore (laughs) pornography to everyone in the gymnasium that was doing the exam. He was up there watching porn whilst adjudicating an exam. And it wasn't a sex education exam, no? No, there no. was no... I mean, he was the maths teacher. I guess technically he could have passed it off as uh, complex equations because yeah. I think from my memory he was trying to see whether three went into one. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the other thing I did recently, actually, actually not as How bad. How is there anything worse than that? That wasn't that bad. You've permanently oh. disabled a geriatric woman in Oxford City Centre and you've left your wife to die in the ocean. Oh, no. What th- could be worse than that? This was... Uh, it just makes you cringe so much. It was awful. I interviewed... You run over a child? Like, no. what? How I interviewed Brad Pitt recently. Anyway, big guess on the part. Anyway, we get it. I thought, oh, how am I? He's, he's probably going to high five me. Like that's what Brad Pitt would do. So as I walked in, I was like, went straight for the high five. He had his fist out in the fist pump, and I grabbed his fist and I went, oh, doorknob. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay this is the that, is that is worse. That is worse. He was trying to get to Narnia or something. Oh my god. Doorknob. Doorknob. <laughs> That's not even a thing. <laughs> wow. How is it possible? That is actually worse. Yeah. Why the fuck did I pretend his hand was a doorknob? <laughs> <laughs> That's the other rule of Fight Club, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Am I in? Don't dawn on your opponent. <laughs> I was doing a gig in Oldham in a pub, like upstairs in a pub, and it was like a biker pub. Well, it wasn't a biker pub, it just had one biker wall with a load of bike memorabilia. Mm. And the guy who ran the gig went, Don't mention that. Don't talk about the bike stuff on the wall. That's the one rule we have. Now get out there. And I went out there and I did a load of my jokes. I was like, Oh, yeah, I was in Waitrose the other day and complete silence. 
tumbleweed every time I put out a joke. My Hugh Fernley witting storm material crashed and burned. Uh, All of my gags about um, going to school with Robert Pattinson tanked. Uh, I was dying. I was desperate. I was desperate up there for anything. And I looked over at this wall and I thought, I'm going to go no! there. And I went, why, why is there all of this bike stuff? It's so weird. Like all of the rest ah! of the pub is normal. Then you've got just like one biker wall, more silence. And then I thought the get out, having tried to do the biker material, was to go, well, what, someone fall off a bike? And I said that. And then it went, I don't think you can have anything worse than silence. But it was like the sound of like a pool cue cracking at the back of the room and a glass smashing. And I was like, okay, well, that's been my time this evening. It's been wonderful uh, to share the evening with you. Thank you very much. I've been Jack Whitehall. Good night. Nah. And then I walked off and he went, why didn't you listen? Landlady's husband fell off a bike and died last year. That's a memorial to him. I was like, oh, God. Oh, kill me. Literally ground. Swallow me up.